page number 42, we have seen uh, the double entry system regarding your inventory movements. I hope there is no problem there. So 3.5 and onwards is what we are going to do, page number 42 and page, page 43. So uh, we uh, basically, now this is the next part. We have learned how do we, uh, how we calculate uh, the values of inventory and how we record them as a debit and credit entry in our journals and then ledger and then we learned how to extract a trial balance. And uh, this part is afterwards, like you can see 3.5 I'll go through the question once and then we are going to learn to solve it. Pehle hum uska basic jo uh, mathematical uh, theory hai behind it. Pehle hum usko discuss karenge aur uske baad hum usko ek proper layout mein we will learn how to present our answer in our uh, in a proper layout. So M Canyon is a sole trader supplying textbooks to local bookshops and the following balances were extracted from his from his books at the end of his first year from his books over here means from his books of accounts at the end of his first year of trading on 31st March 20x5 and then we are given some data we are given sales of 6200 books at $10 each this $10 is obviously the selling price because that is mentioned with the sales value and the total sales $62,000 given next to the description is actually the closing balance of your sales account in the ledger. Do you understand the 62,000, the information source for this $62,000? Sales next to the sales, you're given that you have sold 6,200 books and one book that you sold, you sold it at a selling price of $10 each resulting in $62,000. But if we keep things in perspective, we should know that this information, there is a, there's a proceeding, there's a procedure that precedes this information. And that information was that we must have made a T account of sales in our ledger. Or then we have balance it, just like the assignment that you did last night. So this $62,000 is actually the balance carried down in your sales account. If you understand the source of this $62,000, please give me a green check on uh, participants feedback window here. The point being that whatever information that we are looking at is not just appears out of a uh, out of thin air. There is a preceding procedure. Okay, Misha, when we make a sales account in the ledger, we place entries on the ledger, right? When we make a credit side, we normally balance the account balance karte, Then uh, the balance carried down is what we are referring to over here. This $62,000 of sales account value it's, it's uh, sorry, $62,000 of the sales value is actually taken from the sales account in your ledger. This is what I meant. You understand, Misha? We need to know the source of this information. We need to know that this particular information is actually connected to what we have done yesterday and the day before. Good, Misha. All right. <clears throat> Then after sales, we are given the details about our purchases, right? We bought 7,800 books at $8 each, and that results in the total purchases value of 62,400. And we now know that this 62,400 was actually obtained from the purchases account in your ledger. This 62,400 must be appearing there as the closing balance. We agree with the source of purchases information here, 62,400, that this is the closing balance of purchases T account in your ledger. Yeah, please give me your feedback on participants window. Asma, you have, uh, uh, Asma, there is a red cross. Asma, this is basically, this information is coming from your ledger. But we need to understand that whatever information is being presented over here, we have taken all this information from our existing ledger. If you don't understand it, then unmute your mic and you can ask me what part is troubling you. I will explain it then. Okay, understood. Good. And then we have at the end of uh, the information, we are given the inventory on 31st March 20x5 or 1600 books. Basically, what, me, what it means over here is, uh, we know that 
inventory is represented by four accounts in the ledger. In this case, we are only given sales and purchases. That means there were no return inwards or returns outwards or sales returns or purchases returns. And after all these events, we must have some unsold inventory of goods left at the end of the year. And we can always conclude this value by comparing the sales and the purchases that are given in the question. It says you bought 7,800 books and you sold 6,200 books. So obviously there, mu there must be 1,600 books remaining unsold in your, uh, in, your, in your accounting records. And that is what is given to you at the end of the year that you have 1,600 books still remaining at the end of the year. So how do, uh, what are we required to do? We are required to calculate the gross profit or profit simply. I'll explain the meaning of gross profit in a bit. But what we are required to do is compare these in this, whatever information that we have, and we have to calculate the value of the profit. Now, how do we calculate the profit? So let me just give you the basic uh, idea. Do you agree with this that the profit is basically <clears throat> profit is if you want to calculate profit on one particular book that you are buying and selling then do you agree with this equation that whatever selling price minus whatever the cost price of that book right if you agree with this equation on the screen then give me a green check on the feedback window it's a matter of common sense if you want to calculate profit you just have to compare that the item that you are selling how much did it cost you and how much you're selling it for so the comparison between the two will always give you the profit asma we don't understand alina sayed we don't understand but we do asma and alina good so if we just take one book in isolation then our one book is selling for ten dollars each and it costs us eight eight dollars each eight dollars yeah eight dollars each and that gives us a profit of two dollars per book right do you agree with this calculation do you understand that if we buy and sell one book we make two dollars a profit yes or no in the feedback window everyone Yes, Amal, Madiha, Amal, we understand? Amal and Madiha, Amal probably is disconnected. Okay, now this is one book in isolation and we have concluded one thing that we will be making $2 of profit every book that we sell. Now, let's take the entire situation in perspective now we are not just given the information about one book we are given the entire information so let me just uh, rephrase this statement here this principle that if you want to calculate profit you have to compare selling price of one product with the cost price of the same product and that is how you calculate the profit but right now we are not selling with the data that is given to us is not about just one book the equivalent of selling price per unit when we apply the same concept on overall inventory so do you agree with this that the sales account balance is going to be jo bhi aapka balance hai, that is going to represent your sales as an overall revenue and we will we will see what is the equivalent of the cost price over here so what do you think? What is the equivalent of a cost price when we de deal with the inventory overall? Selling price is equivalent to we can find in our ledger account as sales account balance. What is the equivalent of, or what is the representation of cost price in our ledger? Which account represents the cost of the goods that you are buying? The purchases account. Inventory. Uh, inventory does not exist as an account. Inventory ke hum char representative accounts banate hain apne ledger mein. One is what we call sales account. One is the other one is the purchases account. These are the two main ones. And then there are two subsidiary accounts, sales returns and purchases returns. And in the chat box, if you refer to, most of us have uh, already identified uh, it correctly that the cost of the goods is represented by purchases account. 
So would you agree with me if I put purchases account balance over here <coughs> as the accounting representation of a general way of putting this, uh, this equation? This is a general way of putting profit. The profit is the difference between selling price and the cost. Now we are translating the same expression into what we have learned in accounting so far. So selling prices ka representation of your records may sales account ke balance say reflect what out there. And the costs are reflected in your purchases account, right? That is why we need to have them separate. So if we understand uh, this new version of the same generalized expression of profit, then give me a green check on the participants window. Madiha and Maheen, we don't. Maheen. Uh, sorry, Maheen. Yeah. Maheen, are you there? It's all right. Okay. Purchases account. Now, let's plug in the values here and see if we get the desired answer or not. So, our sales account balance here is. $62,000 as you can see from the information and then our purchases account balance is $62,400 here and if we can if we compare these two values it gives us a negative $400 pro profit over here which is actually a loss of $400 so do you agree with this that if we go by the values which are given to us in this question our sales account balance is $62,000 and the purchases account balance which we which we decided as the cost representation of cost in this account is $62,400 and we compare the two we get a strange answer here we are not making any profit we are making a loss so first of all we understand what we did we just simply plugged in the values which are given to us for sales and the purchases as we have previously agreed that purchases account balance is going to represent the cost of the goods that we are referring to. So there is a problematic issue here at hand. If you see one book in isolation, you're making a $2 of profits. But if you see the overall operations, then you are you, you see that we have a loss of $400. So obviously something is wrong here. If one book is making you $2 of profit and you sold 6,200 books sold, that means you should make $12,400 of profit as per the information. Do you agree with this, that this part here, it's, it's making more sense here that if you make two dollars of profit every book that you sell because you are selling one book for ten dollars each and one book costs you eight dollars each then you are making a two dollars profit every book that you sell and if you have sold sixty two hundred books then your profit should come out to be twelve thousand four hundred dollars makes more sense but when you compare the given data here you're not making a profit of $12,400, you're making a loss of $400. So obviously we are making some mistake here. Can somebody identify the mistake here? O-level accounting students, hold your answer. Oh, chalo. Okay, very good, Mahin. Chalo. Hey, everyone, please give me your feedback on the chat box. What mistake are we making here? We should have made $12,400 of profit, but the same equation when translated to overall inventory, we make a loss of $400. So we are making a mistake here. So can you identify the mistake here? Excellent, Alina, Fajr. Expenses, no. Expenses, we don't have to worry about expenses. The point is, we have a fundamental mathematical error. Commit what is that fundamental mathematical error? Because that is going to help us to make a further conclusion here. So yes, as Mahin and, uh, and Alina and Madiha have mentioned, you see their answers over here. The fundamental mathematical error that we are making here is that we are comparing two wrong sets of values. This sales account balance that we are referring to over here, that represents 6,200 books. 
whereas the purchases account balance that we are subtracting from this sales account balance to find the profit is representing 7,800 books. So we are not comparing like with like, right? We are, the mistake that we are making, yes, Asma, you're absolutely right. Closing inventories was not subtracted, Mahirin. Yes, I'm, I'm coming to that point. Excellent, everyone. So 6,200 books ke revenue ko, aap 7,800 books ki cost ke saath compare kare, and that is the mathematical mistake that we're making here. If we want to calculate profit, then we have to make sure that jitni units ki sales revenue aapne earn kiya hai, you have to compare it with the cost of the same number of books. You're making an error over here that you are comparing the 6,200 books revenue with 7,800 books of cost and that is not a fair comparison. We should compare the 6,200 books revenue with 6,200 books cost. So we understand the error that we are making over here. Please give me your feedback on, on the participants window here quickly. Yes or no? Do we understand the error? We are going to fix this error. But do we understand the error first? Because in order to fix the error, you need to understand the error first. Okay, Fajr, what did you understand? Okay, let me explain it. Fajr, we are selling 6,200 books. So, 6,200 books se jo aapne revenue or income generate kiye, agar aapne fair comparison karna hai, toh phir 6,200 books ki sales revenue ko 6,200 books ki cost ke saath compare karenge, tab ja ke aapke paas uh, accurate value aegi. Let me prove it here. Let me prove it over here. Then I'm sure you'll understand it afterwards. <clears throat> so, basically, what we need to do is now, we need to fix this equation. There, this equation has a fundamental error. We cannot just compare sales account balance with the purchases account balance and come to the conclusion that, okay, fine, this is the profit. Now, this equation needs to evolve. So, we are going to create another equation. So, your profit here is equal to sales account balance or sales revenue. Let me refine the terms now. Sales revenue means income generated through sale of goods. This is what sales revenue means, right? So sales revenue minus, instead of having purchases account balance over here, we should refine it to a more... Okay, Asma, I'm going to do So we will compare it with sales revenue with cost of the goods which were sold. Instead of having purchases over here, we should convert it into another value called the cost of goods sold because then it will make a fair comparison. So sales revenue and the cost of goods which were sold. That means we should not consider the cost of goods which were never sold. So I'll come to that, how we calculate this. So what is the sales revenue in this case? Sales revenue is $62,000, right? And how do we calculate the cost of goods sold? What we do is we take the total cost of goods, which was 62400 and we subtract the $12,800 of closing inventory here. This 6200 is representing your purchases. And this 12800 is representing your closing inventory. We call it the closing inventory. Closing inventory simply means unsold inventory. The in that part of the inventory that remains unsold. That is what we call the closing inventory, right? So if you want to calculate the cost of goods which were actually sold, wait, my internet connection is unstable. Everyone can hear me? Everyone can hear me properly or I am breaking up because I just... Uh, okay, good, Minal. Yeah, okay, great. So what we do is we need to find sales revenue and then we will compare it with the cost of goods which were actually sold. But right now, jitni books aapne bechi hain, utni books ki hi cost aap uske saath match karenge, tab ja ke aapke paas profit aayega. So uh, we understand that how we calculate the cost of goods sold, we take the total cost of the goods that we bought, which is this value, 
विच इज़ द परचेज अकाउंट परचेज अकाउंट का बैलेंस आपको बताता है कि आपने पूरी जो भी आपने चीज़ें खरीदी थी उन सब की कलेक्टिव कॉस्ट क्या थी एंड बी सब्ट्रैक्टेड द कॉस्ट ऑफ गुड्स विच रिमेंड अनसोल्ड राइट सो अगर हम टोटल कॉस्ट ऑफ गुड्स में से अनसोल्ड गुड्स की कॉस्ट निकाल देंगे तो वट विल रिमेन दैन वट रिमेन्स इज द कॉस्ट ऑफ गुड्स विच वर एक्चुअली सोल्ड सो डू वी अंडरस्टैंड द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ कॉस्ट ऑफ गुड्स विच वर सोल्ड गिव मी अ ग्रीन चेक और अ रेड क्रॉस इन द फीडबैक विंडो I'm Nakashif. I have the. Do we understand it better? Yes, we do. Okay. So now, if we calculate the answer, now we'll find out that our profit value will reconcile. So can you please tell me, sixty-two four hundred minus twelve thousand eight hundred. How much is the value? Forty-nine thousand six hundred. Asma, thank you. So now we have our sales revenue, and this sales revenue represents how many books? Six thousand two hundred books. Right? Six thousand two hundred units here. right and this is your cost of goods sold and this is also now representing 6200 units here right so now we are comparing like with like pehle hum apple and oranges comparison kar rahe the ab hum like it like with like comparison kar rahe and now if we calculate our profit that comes out to be how much it should come out to be 12400 very good and now we know that we have calculated the profit correctly because when we calculated profit originally from a single book calculation wo 12400 aa raha tha and now comparing all the accounting data that we have maintained in our ledger is also coming out to be 12400 so in conclusion what we do is we say that if we are to calculate profit we always compare our sales revenue revenue is another name for income so sales revenue is basically income generated from the sale of goods and we always compare it with the cost of goods sold and cost of goods sold hum kaise calculate karte hain cost of goods sold is always calculated as you take the purchase as account balance and you subtract the closing inventory any closing inventory or unsold inventory if left at the end of the year you subtract the two values and then you will find your cost of goods sold so this is how we calculate profit and this profit that we calculate this way it has a special name we call it the gross profit which is required in this question gross profit by definition means profit that you earn through trading of goods trading of goods mean through buying and selling of goods Alina Sayed says, "Can we not just multiply the profit made off one book and the total number of books sold?" Absolutely, we can do that. Like we did that. The very first calculation is what we did—the same thing: profit made from one book multiplied by the number of books which we sold, and then we arrive at this twelve thousand four hundred. You understand? We do that. This is the easier calculation. But the problem over here is, we in accounting records we don't have. sales and purchases is recorded separately for every unit that you sell instead we have a collective account called sales account and we have a collective a, a total accumulated account here called purchases account which represents the total sales revenue and the total cost of all the books that we have bought and sold so the problem is that whatever accounting data that we are accumulating that what we have learned in the first three chapters we do not have the access to this information here we would rather have the sales account balance and the purchases account balance <clears throat> so that is why we need to know if we have per unit information available that's the much easier way of doing it and we will probably do the same but when we don't have this information and we are simply given what's the sales account balance and what's the purchases account balance and what's the closing inventory left then we have no other option but to follow this equation here secondly alisha uh, alina sorry secondly over here what are we assuming that the that all the books 6200 books that you sold during that one year they were all sold at 2 dollars each now this is a very big assumption because imagine that every single book 2 dollars each may be created in practical life it's not possible sometimes books are going to be sold for 3 dollars sometimes for 1 dollar koi damage ho jayegi to wo shayad aapko scrap mein bechna pade so selling prices 2 dollars each and 
and cost prices, eight dollars each, are an oversimplified situation for you to understand the basic calculations. In, in an actual, you will never have a consistent selling price per book, and you'll never have a consistent cost price per book either. They will keep on varying. So that is why we'll have to see the overall situation in total. What is the total sales revenue? What is the total sales revenue regardless of their selling prices? Kuch se zyada selling prices bikengi, kuch kampe bikengi. And what's their total cost value? So that is how it's, it's going to be more dependable and a more consistent way of calculating profit because the selling prices and the cost prices will never remain the same throughout the year. So we understand that we, we have both the options. We can do both ways. But it's hardly this method that we have seen earlier on. This method is only applicable if the selling prices and the cost prices do not change during the entire year, which is a very unlikely situation. It's like almost impossible to have a situation like this. More likely situation is that your sales revenue will consist of many different types of uh, selling prices which fluctuate during the year. And same goes with your suppliers. Sometimes suppliers sell you at a lower cost. Sometimes they will sell you at a higher cost depending on demand and supply. So the prices, the purchase price will also keep on fluctuating. So you can never have a uniform equation. So the only way to calculate gross profit is to see them collectively, not individually. Good. So if you understand uh, the equation on your screen now, then give me your feedback, yes or no feedback on your on the participants window. <clears throat> Amal? Okay, good. So now this is the, we are not going to produce our answers as an equation. We are going to produce our answer as an accounting statement, just like the balance sheet that we learned in uh, chapter one. So how do we present our answer? We are going to produce up my 3.5 concept produce kind of like a, so we are going to produce another financial statement just like the balance sheet that we have learned before M Canyon on top just we have to fulfill the formalities and the financial statement that we are referring to now is what we call the income statement the statement the financial statement which is responsible for calculating profits we had the introduction to income statement in our first lecture but we did not know how to make one. So now we are learning how to start making an income statement. So income statement for the year ended. Uh, the year ends on 31st March. 20x5. And we will have two columns just like balance sheet. Every accounting statement is going to be made in, the, in a similar pattern. You will have at least two columns. You can have more than two, but for now, two columns will do, just like balance sheet. All preliminary calculations are going to be mentioned in this first column. And the answer to these calculations is going to come to the final figure column, right? So our calculation requires us to do this. We need to calculate, <clears throat> in order to calculate gross profit, we need to see what our sales revenue is, and then we are going to compare it with the cost of goods sold. So that's how I'm going to start our work. So I'm going to put sales revenue here. That's our first title. And sales revenue should not be confused with the sales account balance. There is a slight difference here. I'll explain the reason and the difference here. Sales revenue means income generated through sale of goods. Sales account balance means kitna volume aapne becha through sales, right? Income earn karna or bechna are two de different acts. When you sell a book, you earn income in return. However, you may have sold more books than you have earned the income. How? Let me just put over here. So in this case, sales are 62,000. Uh, 62,000 probably. Yeah, 62,000. Yeah. And we... There is a possibility in this question, it doesn't exist, but there is a possibility that there are sales returns. If there are any sales returns, we will put here, but since there is no sales return, I'm just putting it for your reference here, taki aap ugly questions, which have sales returns, then you'll know how to treat it. So sales return is going to be subtracted from your sales, overall sales account balance. 
and then you will find the sales revenue. So this is your sales revenue and this is your sales. In this particular situation, the sales and the sales revenue are the same value. Why? Because we don't have sales returns. But if we have sales returns, like in the case of 3.7 and 3.8 and onwards, then you should know that there is a difference between overall sales and the sales revenue. So revenue addition is income you have earned. So what do you earn from sales is what is a net of your returns. So uh, if we understand the difference between sales revenue and sales, overall sales, then please give me a green check on the feedback window. Alina Vakas, okay, go ahead, bitte. Iman Badr ko bhi nahi samajaya. Alina ko bhi nahi samajaya. Agar aapne 64,000 ki sales ki hoti or 2,000 dollars ki sales returns ho jati hai. Iska matlab hai ki 2,000 ki goods aapko aapki customers na wapis bech diya hai. To aapne kitni income earn ki? 62, 4,000 minus 2,000, right? That's what it means. There is a difference between what you earn through sale of goods and what you sell. So sales account over here is simply means what you sold. And what you earn through <clears throat> the sale of goods is what this extension means over here. What was your real earning? Right? Your real earning will be after the goods jo aap, sir, aapko customers ne return kiye, aap unko subtract kar denge yaan se, and then you will put it over here. In accounting, okay, Alina understood. Iman, do we understand better? Iman Badr? Right? So in accounting, we do not use the plus sign and minus sign. Instead, we use it, we use we, we write it in words. So if we are to subtract something, we will write less. Then we put a colon here, and then we we we, we mention the quantity which is to be subtracted here. All right. Good, good, Iman. Very good. So this is your sales revenue, 62,000. Then the next step, this is done. So we are done with the sales revenue. The next step is the cost of goods sold here. And cost of goods sold, calculate karne ka tariqa kya, we'll have to have purchases and then the closing inventory. So let's start with the cost of goods sold. We're going to give it a working title, just like sales revenue. So we'll write cost of goods sold. And that is your working title, just like sales revenue. And now we are going to mention the elements, how we calculate the cost of goods sold. How do we do this? We need to look for the purchases value and we need to look for the unsold closing inventory and that we will subtract. So we start with the purchases and purchases account balance is given to us as 62,400, right? And just like sales returns over here, which means certain goods have been returned by our customers, so they do not qualify to be our income. The same way we are going to subtract the returns outwards or purchases returns if they exist. Since we have returned these goods back to our suppliers, so purchases returns, if you have hoti ye value, to aap usko yahan se subtract karte because they do not qualify to be a part of your cost since you have returned them back. You did not buy them at all then, right? So purchases may say when you subtract the purchases returns, then you can find the true cost of the goods that you have bought. So I'm just putting nil here and nil here for reference. These are simply your placeholders that if you have sales returns, you will plug in the value here. And if you have the purchases returns, you will plug in the value over here. So these are just simply the placeholders. I could have skipped it because in this question, uh, we don't have any sales returns and purchases returns, but this is only for your reference. Do we understand that we need to subtract returns from the parent value? Sales returns are going to be subtracted from sales and purchases returns are going to be subtracted from the purchases account. Give me your feedback on the participants window, please. Madiha Shahzad. Okay. <clears throat> and so we are done with the purchases. We are done with the purchases. And now we will look for the closing inventory. Do we have any closing inventory? Yes, we do. And the closing inventory on uh, the closing inventory on 31st March is going to be subtracted. We, so we write again less than a colon. And then we write closing inventory. And the closing inventory amounts to 
as $12,800. And now we can calculate the cost of goods sold. So can you please help me? Yeah, oh, 49,600, we have already calculated it. So 49,600 and that's how we show the value. We mention the elements of calculation in the first column and then we take it, take the final value in the final column. Similarly, the elements of cal calculations are here and then the final value goes to the final column here. So we understand the calculation, please give me a feedback here so far if you understood these uh, figures right uh, Fajr and Iman Badr Nareen Fajr okay good so now this is our this was our sales revenue that is wrong. This is our sales revenue. Now, this value that we have just calculated here, that is your cost of goods sold. So 49,600 is the resulting value of this section. And this section tells you how to calculate cost of goods sold. So finally, we have 49,600 here. We subtract. We need to subtract the sales revenue and the cost. They have the opposing natures. And now we will find the cal the gross profit, which is uh, 12,000, how much was that? 12,400. So if you subtract the two quantities, you will find 12,400 12, as your gross profit. And this is what we are going to title as our profit on trading, profit on buying and selling goods. Gross profit is the profit that you purely achieved out of buying and selling goods. So this is your gross profit. So this is the first part of your income statement. The first part of your income statement is only about how to calculate profit on buying and selling of goods. The, the income statement is not complete yet. We will complete the income statement in the next chapter. But for now, only the first half of the income statement is what you need to be familiar with. So please give me a green check that if we understood the layout and we understand all the calculations, also, that sales returns and purchases returns are simply playing as a play, placeholder here. We will be able to fill in those values later on. So, okay, everyone, Alina Vakas, you don't, you don't understand it? Mahin Mersaleen, we do. Mahin? Mahin Mersaleen, do we write less before cost of sales too? It's up to you. You can always write, yes. Mahin, you can always write less cost of sales too. Yahape. Yes, if you want to be clearer, then you can always write less before the cost of goods sold section, yes. Okay, so <clears throat> I want you to take two minutes, three minutes at the most. Do 3.7. Don't do 3.6. You can do 3.6 just like I did 3.5 later on for your practice. But do 3.7 right now, quickly, in five minutes. Three minutes rather. It's a small question. You have the layout in front. Make a small segment income statement key first half. Give it proper titles, give the date, and use the layout that you can see on the screen and find the gross profit for 3.7. And now you see you have sales returns and the purchases returns as well. So you know where to place them. And once you have calculated your gross profit, leave a green check there and give me your profit on the chat box so that we can compare with others too. And you don't have to draw those red arrows that I have drawn. These are only for your reference that which value represents which particular item. Mahin says uh, 24,900. Mahin, you can confirm your answer with the, with the back as well. 
or wait for your friends to find out, then we can compare the values. Nehreen, is your mic on? Are you saying something or are you on the same way? Okay, good. Twenty four thousand nine hundred is what Mehreen has calculated. Please verify Mehreen's answer if your answer is the same. Okay, Alina got the same answer. Twenty four nine hundred. You can always check your values at the back of the book. Odd numbered questions have detailed answers printed at the back of the book. Alina Vakas is getting twenty five thousand five hundred. So we have a difference in opinion. Alina and uh, Maheen and Me uh, Mehreen. Mehreen, apne answers check. Okay, Maheen is also saying 25,500. Madiha says 25,500. So Alina's answer is correct. Mehreen, please check your answer. The answer is printed at the back of the book. You can check 3.7's answer. It's on page number. Let me tell you what page number is this. 25,500 asthma is also confirmed. So now we have a confirmed answer. It's page number 368. Alina Sayed also got 25,500. Excellent. And the page 368 where we have the printed answer, it also says 25,500. So excellent work. Very good. So if you're done and you have $25,500 as your gross profit, please give, uh, leave a green check on the feedback window. Okay, Misha and Hadia, we are waiting. If you get $25,500 as your answer, then give me a green check on. Amal Kavi, $25,500. Hadia got that. Misha is having problem or Misha is probably disconnected. Misha, do you have 25,500? Okay, Misha got the correct answer as well. Excellent. Very good. Now, we will move to, uh, you can do 3.6 and 8 later on for your practice. Not now. We have, uh, we have 19 minutes to go. So we will move on to the last two questions. Now, before we do 3.9 and 3.10, I want you to uh, take. A, uh, I want you to notice something peculiar about a common feature in all the opening statements from 3.5 to 3.8. So let me read M Canyon. Well, a 3.5 well, a question. The opening statement. It says M Canyon is a sole trader supplying textbook to local bookshops. The following balances were extracted from his books at the end of his first year. So we were dealing with the first year in the life of a business. Now 3.6. Masood Ahmed is a sole trader supplying accounts registers to local stores and offices. The following balances were extracted from his books at the end of his first year of trading. These, these businesses have just completed the very first year of their lives. 3.7. Jimmy Trott is a wholesaler dealing in consumer items. The following balances were extracted from his book on the 31st March 20x5, but it doesn't say it was his first year, but there is an evidence that it was also the first year. And 3.8, L Thorpe is a sole trader dealing in general at the following balance. Okay, so 3.7 and 3.8 do not tell you whether this is the first year or not, but there is a common feature that identifies businesses which are just through with the first year compared to the businesses which are dealing with the second year or subsequent year in the life of their trading businesses. Now, what is that common feature? O-level accounting students will take charge over here. So how do we know if we are dealing with the first year in trading or second year or any subsequent year in the life of a business? So O-level accounting students, can you tell me? There is no opening value of opening inventory, Madiha Shahzad, opening value, Maheen Marcelin, excellent, Maheen, excellent, Madiha. Right, let me explain what Maheen and uh, Madiha mentioned and Alisha, if balances were brought down. Yes, Alisha, excellent. If we are dealing with the first year in the businesses, there is no balances to be brought forward from any previous year because there was no previous year. 
It was the first year in the business. But if we are dealing with the second year of trading or any subsequent year after the second year, we will always have the opening balances, just like we have learned from the ledger that if we calculate balance carried down in one account, that balance carried down is going to be brought down in the following financial period. So if we are dealing with the second year or any subsequent year, the closing inventory of the first year becomes the opening inventory for the second year or the following year, right? So let me just make a timeline here to explain what I'm saying here. So let's say this was your this timeline represents one particular year. So your business started here on 1st of January, 2016. Let's say you started, this is where, this is the uh, starting of the business, right? So starting of the business, obviously there is nothing before that. It's a black hole before that, right? So your financial year finishes on 31st of December, 2016. So you will have some unsold inventory called the closing inventory for this financial, this segment here. So this here is your first year, year one. So year one, we do not have any opening inventory, but we do have the closing inventory, right? Now comes your second year. So for the second year, this inventory becomes opening inventory and the closing Joby is 31st of December 2017 pay aapke jo inventory padi we unsold inventory that becomes the closing inventory for the second year so the closing so this inventory for the second year this particular financial year this is your year two right so the, for the year two, this is going to be your opening inventory and this is going to be your closing inventory, right? So in the first four questions from 3.5 to 3.8, you can see the data. There is no opening inventory. So even if it was not mentioned in the statement that this was their first year in trading, so you could have simply assumed that since there is no opening inventory, which is an evidence of a, a previous year, a previous financial year, but there was no opening inventory, so that means we were all we were dealing with first year of trading in 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, and 3.8. So these were all the very first years of the trading in the life of that business. But for 3.9 and 3.10, if you see the data, you see you have inventory on 1st of October. Let me read the question. Jay Burton is a trader. 3.9 is what I'm doing. 3.10 is going to be your homework. Jay Burton is a trader dealing in general items. The following balances were extracted from his books on 30th of September. Alina Vakas asks that shouldn't inventory remain with a business for less than a year? Yes, it does. This inventory is going to be sold very quickly, maybe in a matter of weeks. Then you will buy more goods, purchases. Then you'll sell those goods. Then you keep on buying goods and keep on selling these goods. So that specific part of inventory keeps on converting into sales until the end of the year when you buy something and you were not able to sell the entire thing. Remember, purchase is not going to happen once in the, in the year. It's an ongoing process, right? Is it essential? Achha, Alina, I also come to you. I have a question to answer. Karta hu. Alina, do we understand that the opening inventory is going to be exhausted first? Only then you'll buy fresh goods. Why would you buy more goods? Why would you have purchases if you already have inventory in your warehouse? So you keep on selling what you already have in your warehouse or your stores. And once you are, uh, once you have emptied your warehouse or your store, then you will buy fresh goods and then you start selling them again. So this cycle is going to continue till the end until Maybe 28th of December, you will buy some goods here, and you will buy some portion of them, but you will buy some portion of them unsold. So that is what we call the unsold inventory or the closing inventory. Okay, Alina says, I understood. Good. And uh, uh, Hadia's uh, question over here, is it essential to have a closing inventory every year? Uh, the answer is no. But most of the cases, you will have some unsold inventory 
lying in your warehouse somewhere. The reason is that you cannot predict that how many goods are going to be sold. So you always buy a buffer when it comes to purchases. But it's a bad business practice that you have a client or a customer willing to buy goods from you and you don't have anything to sell. So you always buy a little extra than you're expected to sell. And that is why in most of the cases, there will be some unsold inventory because of the fact that you bought slightly more than what you were expecting to sell. Got it, Hadia? So that is why in most of the cases, you will almost, in fact, you will almost always have a closing inventory at the end of the year. Good. Okay, now, if we uh, refer to the information in question 3.9, J. Burton is a trader dealing in general items and the following balances were extracted from his books on 30th of September 20X7. Doesn't say it was his first year or not. And, and, and the question doesn't have to mention this fact now. Now we know that we can always detect whether it's a first year or not. If we have just the closing inventory and there is no opening inventory, that means there was no previous year. And if we have some closing inventory and opening inventory as well, which, we, which is the case in this question, you can see... Uh, sales up to about sixty thousand four hundred dollars the year, and then followed by that sales, you have inventory on first of October twenty x six. You can see your financial year finishes thirtieth of September twenty x seven in the opening statement. So if your financial year finishes on thirtieth of September, say two thousand and seventeen twenty x seven, को अगर हम assume करें कि ये twenty seventeen लिखा हुआ है, तो फिर हमारा financial year जरूर twelve months ago शुरू हुआ था. And 12 months ago, the date must have been 1st of October 2016. So do we understand the compound financial year? Zaruri nahi hai ke financial year hamesha ek calendar year hoga. Ke January 1st ko shuru hoga, 31st December ko khatam hoga. Financial year, by definition, financial year means a period of 12 consecutive months. A financial year is 12 consecutive months. Does not necessarily have to start with on 1st of January and finishing on 31st of December. Our financial year is 12 consecutive months time period. So in this case, our financial year is not a calendar year. Our financial year begins on 1st of October 20x6 and it finishes on 30th of September 20x7. So the inventory given on 1st of October 20x6 is must be the opening inventory. Opening inventory means which was there in the beginning of the year. And inventory at 30th of September 20x7 is the closing inventory which was left unsold at the end of our current financial period. So how do we do this? I'll quickly make an income statement here. 3.9. Aap mere saath saath apne books pe copy ke le. Apne notebooks pe. So this is your 3.9. We will start with the formalities. We are going to put the name of the owner on top. J. Burton. Then we will give the name of the, we will give the title of the statement, income statement. For the year ended 30th of September I think 20x7 yes and then we are going to draw our usual columns the two columns this is the final figure column and this is the preliminary calculations column and we will start with our sales revenue just like before that's a working title here. Sales revenue consists of two possible components. The sales account balance itself, which is given to you as $60,400. We'll choose the first column for that. And we look for the sales returns and we will subtract the sales returns to convert the overall sales into sales revenue. So in this case, we are given the sales returns value, which is returns inwards. Remember, return inwards returns So obviously it was sales returns. And so sales returns or return inwards mean the same thing. Same way return outwards means purchases returns. So sales returns are, I think it's $1,200. So can you please tell me what your sales revenue is? Uh, 60,400 minus 1,200. You have uh, the calculator, 59,200. Uh, Alicia, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Madiha, 89,000. Recheck your calculations. 
So it's 59,200. That is your sales revenue or income generated by sale of goods. Then we can write the cost of goods sold, cost of goods sold, or you can write less before that too. We understood that cost of goods or sale revenue of goods, they are opposing forces. So eventually they will be canceled out by each other. And the cost of goods sold, we start with our purchases value as usual. We will calculate the cost of purchases first. So the purchases value given to us is $38,200. And since the cost of purchases is going to be different from purchases because they differ because of the purchases returns, we will subtract it. Purchases returns means goods we have returned back to our supplier. So they do not qualify to be a part of the cost of the goods. And the amount of purchases returns is 1,100. We subtract, right? And then, we will add the opening inventory. If there is an opening inventory, you will add it to the cost of goods sold section and you will subtract the closing inventory. Just like before, because you want to calculate the cost of goods which were sold. So opening inventory is 7,900 and closing inventory is subtracted at $8,400. And now we can calculate the cost of goods sold. I will explain why we add opening inventory here in a bit. So, pehle mujhe figures de de, phir main aage chalta hu. What is the cost of goods sold? 36,500. Please verify everyone. Do your own calculations. Verify the values. 36,500. Is it 36,600 or 500? Minal says 600. Alicia says 500. What is the value here? The correct value of closing inventory is. 36,500 hey, or 36,600? 36,600. So we confirm from multiple sources. 36,600. And now we will be able to calculate our gross profit. So what is the gross profit? $22,600, $22,600, and that is our gross profit. Okay, so I'm sure you must be wondering why did we choose to add the opening inventory here. But before I explain the reason why we add the opening inventory, do you agree with this that the closing inventory needs to be subtracted here? Why do we subtract closing inventory? Because we are trying to determine the cost of goods which were sold, right? Sorry, my sold like Nabulga. Cost of goods sold, right? So we need to compare the income generated from the sale of goods, which is this value. We need to compare the income generated from sale of goods compared with the cost of goods which were sold. So every item appearing here, if it represents the cost of goods sold, that will be a part of the calculation. And if it does not represent the cost of goods sold, we subtract it. For example, closing inventory means that the goods which remained unsold at the end of the year. So these goods were not sold. If these were never sold, these should not be a part of the cost of goods sold. That is why we subtract. We understand closing inventory, subtract any reason, care. Please give me your feedback in participants window. Since we are calculating the cost of goods which were sold, so every item of inventory which we could never sell needs to be subtracted from there. And that is the reason why we subtracted the closing inventory here because this is representing the goods which could not be sold. Amal, we don't understand it, but We also subtract purchases returns over here and we can apply the same logic here. Purchases returns means goods that we initially bought, but these goods could never be sold because we returned them back to our suppliers because of some fault or some problem. And that is why the same logic applies here. Since $1,100 worth of goods were returned back to your suppliers, so obviously these were not sold and that is why we subtract it here. Do you agree with this? Give me your feedback. 
you agree with this that the purchases returns are also sold you can also have a parallel explanation that applies to the closing inventory as well the closing inventory ka matlab hai aapne goods nahi beche aur agar wo nahi bik sake aapse to aap usko cost of goods sold mein se nikal denge subtract kar denge same logic applies here on purchases returns as well right <clears throat> that you have that you have returned these goods back to your supplier so that means they do not represent the cost of goods which were sold and that is why you had to subtract them here asma we don't understand asma we see asma okay oh asma got dropped okay now coming to the opening inventory now let's refer to this timeline here this is the beginning of the second year this is the end of the first year and the beginning of the second year whatever closing inventory which was keeping first year in perspective becomes the opening inventory for the following year so now this is our financial year that we are considering so obviously as i was explaining alina earlier on that when you have opening inventory you will not buy any further goods because it will be it won't be a wise move that you already have some unsold inventory lying in your warehouse you need to first sell it and then you will be when you're about to exhaust your store uh supplies right so when you're about to finish your store supplies only then you'll go with the more purchases so if you if you have purchases existing in that financial year that means your opening inventory is already being sold do you understand that the very existence of purchases value in a financial year means that whatever opening inventory which existed in the beginning of the year must have been sold by now yes or no give me your feedback here this is an important point because this is going to play a very important role later on in store routine tech topic coming up usme hum first and first out principle observe karenge so we need to understand that opening inventory is not going to last in your business for probably more than 2 weeks or 3 weeks or a month at the most and the existence of purchases value in a given financial year is the evidence that the opening inventory must have been sold and you have already exhausted your existing supplies in your stores and that is why you had to buy more goods so opening inventory is sold this is what we conclude over here amal we don't understand asma we do misha okay good so that is why opening inventory is going to be added over here because this part of the goods has been sold and that is why we need to consider it co its cost as a part of the cost of goods sold so we subtract the closing inventory because it represents unsold inventory or unsold goods and we add the opening inventory value because it represents sold goods so we understand the reason why we add opening inventory and subtract closing inventory then give me your feedback on the participant window excellent excellent amna kashif misha great great okay so this is the end of our lesson 3.10 is going to be your homework i'm going to post it after my classes today so we still oh we are 3 minutes above time sorry sorry you can move on now stay back if you need to ask anything otherwise go to your next class sir ji bete my name is asma asma sorry asma I'm really sorry. Yes. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, Thank Asma. You. You're welcome.